Hey guys, welcome back. We are working on question number 36. I'm going to provide you an alternate and faster solution to this question that does not involve using the tic-tac-toe method to factor this. So if you are fresh and up to date with your factoring methods, one thing that you'll note is that this inside here is what we call a perfect square trinomial, right? So a trinomial has three terms, which is what we have here. And I'll kind of tie it back in as to why it's called a perfect square trinomial in a bit. But first, let's just define what a perfect square is, right? So here are some perfect squares. Uh, we could do the square root of 25, right? That's plus or minus 5. We could do the square root of 36. That's plus or minus 36, right? So these are some examples of things that are. What about some things that are not? So in this case, we may have the square root of 26. Right. If we plug that into our calculator, we would get five point, you know, something, something. Um, similarly, we also have to look at the variables. Right. So what if we have the square root of X cubed? Right. This would give us X root X. So notice how it's not a nice outcome, for lack of a better word. And let's just give one variable example for something that is something like X to the fourth. Right. We would get X squared. Um, so hopefully that kind of makes sense as to what a perfect square is. And now we can also apply that to polynomials. So what's going on when I'm looking at a trinomial, remember three terms to tell if it is a perfect square, I want to pay special attention to the first and last terms. So I want to really look at this and this. Those will have to be perfect squares in order for it to be a perfect square trinomial. So if I take the square root of 4x squared, I'm sorry, 4x to the fourth, what do I get? I get 2x squared. And if I take the square root of 81, I get plus or minus 9. So these are really going to be my building blocks of factoring a perfect square trinomial. And so what I want to pay attention to and how I want to check it is I want to look at my middle term just to double check myself. And I will say normally if your first and last terms are perfect squares, I would say Honestly, 95 plus percent of the questions I see, it is going to be a perfect square trinomial. But just to be double sure, um, the rule is that your middle term is going to be 2 times A times B, where these, this is your A value and this is your B value. So in this case, if I wanted to double check it, I would do 2 times 2x squared times 9, and I would get 9 times 4 is 36x squared. So this checks out to me. So that's just, you know, that's just a double check that we're correct that this is a perfect square trinomial. So now how to write it is we're going to write, and I'm just going to focus on the inside and I'll add the square root symbol later. It's going to be 2x squared plus 9. So again, this is like my A. This is my B. And then the shortcut to figure out whether this middle is going to be a plus or a minus is just to look at this sign. If that's a plus, this is going to be a plus. If it were a minus, that would be a minus. And so now we're actually done factoring our perfect square trinomial. So just to bring that back around, I'm going to just rewrite it with a clear screen. So we have 4x to the fourth plus 36x squared plus 81 is equal to 2x squared plus 9 squared. And I would encourage you if this is, if you're still, you know, not quite sure how that works out, I would encourage you to pause the video and go ahead and foil this out just to prove to yourself that these are in fact equal. But that's kind of the shortcut and how you use it. So now what we really have is we have the square root of something squared. And if you remember, the square root and squaring something, those are inverse operations that cancel each other out, right? So let's look at one quick example of that. The square root of, let's just say, 5 squared, right? That's the square root of 25, which is just plus or minus 5, right? So you see how basically they're just, they're really just canceling each other out. They're inverse operations. So here, because of that, the square root and the square root is going to cancel out. And we are going to be left with 2x squared plus 9 as our final answer. All right. Well, I hope that was helpful. If you still need additional help, I would recommend reviewing the perfect square trinomial method of factoring. Um, as mentioned, I will leave an example article in the description box below, and I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.